Hickok 45 here on a beautiful evening. I mean, it is, it's just gorgeous. These guys were about to attack. Anyway, as I was trying to say, it's a beautiful evening to look at a new firearm, relatively new firearm, and kind of size it up, give you our opinions on it. How's that for an idea? Okay, so it is the M&P Shield 380. It is a defensive gun. It's an easy defensive gun. In fact, that's part of the name. And it's very easy to manipulate and to fire, I think. So let's talk about it. Come on up here to the shooting table, and I might tell you a little bit. And I'm gonna shoot this thing some more, and I'm gonna let you know uh, what I think about it. I've got a couple of other firearms here. Not gonna do a lot of comparison, but it is a shield. Not a big mystery, right, about the shield. Uh, so far, I've been shooting it, I don't know, box and a half, two boxes. I, I didn't put a thousand rounds through it. From what I can tell from other people's experience, it just works. I've shot it, I've shot hollow points, I've shot the hardball. It seems to work. We may have a different experience today. Who knows? You never know what's gonna happen in an unedited video, do you? I might even say something dumb in an unedited video or something smart. Uh, not likely, right? But it's it's a shield, uh, which is one of the most successful, I guess, uh, pistols of all time, perhaps. Yeah, I guess really, if you looked at the number, I don't know what the numbers are that uh, Smith & Wesson has sold, but th this thing has been phenomenally successful. The shield has. I brought my 9mm out here, the shield. Uh, you know, it's a different kind of a firearm. You've got a, a kind of a staggered sort of magazine with it, a little wider where you've got a single stack mag with the uh, uh, the 380. Okay, different uh, cartridge. For those who don't know, I should have brought a nine millimeter out. But the, uh, the 380, another John Browning uh, creation, is a little shorter. It's, uh, you know, it's basically the same size diameter wise, but it's a lighter bullet. You know, these are generally around 95 grains in that, that neighborhood. And uh, not quite the punch that a nine millimeter has but uh, st still uh, nothing you want to sneeze at, right? And uh, it's a 380. that's the big difference, of course, the caliber. So it's a shield and 380. but it's also a little bit lighter. It's uh, by my weighing on my, what is it, a sharper image <laughs> scales I've, I use, it, uh, it comes in just under 18 and a half ounces. And the shield's a couple ounces, almost two and a half ounces heavier, the, the regular nine millimeter shield. Okay, so you're talking about two ounces to maybe two and a half ounces heavier uh, or lighter for this. And that's always good, right? It's firing a you know, lighter cartridge, uh, although it's still the same Browning lockup system. It's not a blowback. You know, it's a, basically the same type of operation uh, as, as relates to the blowback. It's not a blowback operation, okay? That is hammer fired. So, that's a little different from the regular shield, which is a striker-fired uh, firearm, right? So I'll take it apart and show you. But first, I'm going to shoot it, okay? Has not malfunctioned on me. I appreciate that. Let's take it. I'll tell you what let's do. You know, this is a defensive firearm, all joking aside. Uh, those two Desperados were kind of giving me the eye back there, so I had to take them out. But it really is designed for, you know, up close and if you need a firearm, right? Like on this paper. Uh, just throwing rounds, you know, uh, well not throwing rounds, but but uh, putting rounds out that uh, I'd say <laughs> Rapidly, you know, quote unquote uh, And you know in a in sense that you're not shooting bullseyes not trying to shoot bullseyes uh, you, you know, If you ever have to use one of these in a defensive situation, which hopefully none of us ever does right, but it happens But that's what it is a defensive pistol and it's a pistol called the EZ because it's easier to manipulate. And that's the claim to fame here. If you have trouble manipulating the slide, um, then you need to go to one of these, okay? Now, not a Kimber specifically, but a Kimber case <laughs> is what I've been carrying lately. But uh, I love that gun. But you need to go to a revolver. If this, if this is too hard for you to manipulate, okay? And I get this question pretty often. So you folks who have written us over the years uh, about what is a wanting a recommendation for a uh, pistol semi-automatic pistol that it's easier to pull a slide back on and that kind of thing this is it there, there's a few others out there and we've shown you them i i can't think of one easier than this 
it really is easy okay you just a couple of fingers it just comes back so easily it even has a little raised uh, ridge there to back if you notice that the nine millimeter doesn't have and it helps you even grab that if you need it you don't really need it you even grab it on the smooth part up here look at that i'm a weakling but look at that like you make little finger almost and on and that's smooth <laughs> Well, I'm showing you that there are some uh, serrations there you could grab design for that and then of course back here that's better but it's really a light slide very easy to, to manipulate the slide all right so if you've got arthritis you're an old person like myself and you've got arthritis from too much shooting or something uh, this might be what you're looking for if you want to stick with a semi-automatic okay and you don't mind 380 right? So that's a big difference. You can see the cuts on the slide are a little different. It's a little, that's why I guess obviously the two ounces or two and a half ounces come out of the slide would have to pretty much in terms of the difference in the weight. Uh, you know, so they've, they've just cut that a little different. It's a little slimmer maybe. And, uh, and, it, and it works. Now you got the, you notice the big difference. You got the grip safety back here. Okay, a lot of people hate those and that might be a deal killer for you. It, it might be. I don't know. It, it seems to work okay. You know, it's kind of like it's not like a 1911, but you know, it does have the grip safety, quote unquote, like a 1911. It seems to work. You got to make sure you get it depressed before you start pulling the trigger. Uh, it, it's okay. I mean, you got to you got to depress it. I have a couple of times I've not had a, a good grip on it, and it the trigger. What am I empty? You know, but it wasn't. You know, so you just got to make sure you, you got a grip on it. You're gonna fire the thing, okay? So. This one does not have a safety. It comes with a safety uh, as well. I mean, there's two different models. It's not like I took it off, but you have two different choices. You have a safety or no safety. At least right now, I think those are the only uh, choices. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, there's no third choice regarding safety. <laughs> I guess you got either safety or not, but what I mean, the two variations of the pistol. All right. I'll get it right in a minute. Uh, don't expect too much genius from me, right? Uh, so this this really fills a niche because uh, uh, I, I hear from a lot of people uh, about that exact uh, issue about working. They desperately would love to have a, a shield, and I don't know that the shield is all that hard to pull back. Or they want a Glock, or they want a, a Ruger uh, semi-automatic, but they and they've tried somebody's, or they bought one, and they just can't manipulate the slide. It's really hard. And it, it could be anyway. We're not going to pick on females, right? It's, uh, it's anybody. It's, it's men who, whatever, young or just have trouble manipulating it. Haven't, there are techniques that, that make it a lot easier. Uh, and almost anybody using the correct technique can manipulate one. But then again, you know, you want something that's easy to work. So, you know, it's just, you know, age, uh, you know, like I say, arthritis, uh, weak hand, you might, you might have a, a, a disability in one of your hands. You know, you might be missing a finger or something, missing a hand, missing an ear. I don't know, something that would make it difficult to, to manipulate uh, the slide, whatever that might be. And then it's also, it's not just a slide either. It's really easy to break down. You don't even have to pull the trigger. Okay, it's right apart. And uh, it's, it's just a very, it's designed to be easy. No, no question about that. You see the hammer? Uh, it's a hammer fired shield. Kind of a surprise. Interesting. There's your safety thing. I know, I noticed when you're putting your slide back on uh, and everything else, you know, the standard pistol on the barrel, you, uh, you want to be careful. Now, one thing that's a little bit different is on the, uh, the main spring here, recoil spring. It goes in just one way. You notice that? It's instead of just round, you know, which is kind of fine, you know, it works fine. And uh, slip it back on here. If you're squeezing it, you get that up in the way from the safety. So I noticed that. There we go. Lock her back. It's very, very simple to manipulate. Okay. And again, those those little ledges back there, they're not too big, but just big enough to give you a little uh, little bonus there. So pretty nice. All right. I was going to put hollow points in one of these magazines, and nobody reminded me. Why did you not say something? Let's take a couple of shots here. We won't overshoot it. Okay. <laughs> How do you overshoot a pistol? Let's smoke a little pot. Smoke a little ballast. <laughs> Let's go bowling. <laughs> All right. Oh, here's some more uh, pot. Looks like it got wet. Might not burn. Whoop, 
Oop, we had a malfunction. <laughs> That's an interesting malfunction, <laughs> I have to say. I'm not sure I've seen one quite like that. <laughs> oh, well, let's see. Let's catch that. There we go. We'll fire that around again. How's that? Did I have another loaded magazine? Yeah. So I don't know if that was anything I might have done or not. I don't think I had my hand on the slide lock. Uh, so let's shoot something else. <laughs> You know, I did have my thumb. I don't know. <laughs> we stop on the last round. I have to be careful. I tend to shoot it left. You know, I mean, the old standard, if I'm not careful. Uh, the shield is kind of a thin grip pistol to begin with. And I, uh, if a pistol has a thin grip on it, uh, I especially tend to want to go a little left with it, so I have to really focus on that. So if I miss, it's probably going to be to the left, or right, or high or low. So anyway, one, little mal one malfunction there, whatever that was about. Let's see, that was the other magazine. Let's put hollow points in it and try hollow points. That's the first I've had anything go weird like that. Uh, wow, that was a... That was a freakish uh, thing too, wasn't it? The round never, I guess, got in the chamber. It never, you know, there's no strike on the fire on the primer. It never, I guess, got into the chamber. It just jumped up into the way somehow. Okay, how's that happen? Okay, that's that's kind of different. So this was the mag. We'll keep an eye on this magazine. All right. Uh, what else about it? Uh, you got your rail in the front. You've got uh, this, the rear side is adjustable. It'll drift back and forth. Uh, yeah, I think you loosen it from the inside. I meant to show you that on the, uh, when I had the slide off. The, there's a uh, uh, it's a hex screw or something under there, and you loosen it from underneath, and so you can uh, adjust the rear sight for windage. Okay, so let's put a hollow point or two in here. It is a defensive pistol, so you're more likely to carry hollow points, although some people carry a hardball in a 380. One thing about these mags, they're really easy to load, too. They just load uh, simply. They're like a 22. You got that little nub on there. You can kind of pull down and take the pressure off the spring, and there's not much pressure on it. I mean, you don't, you don't really need those. They're like loading a 1911 magazine. Really simple. And, and that can be difficult. Uh, maybe more difficult than getting the slide back if you have arthritis or weak hands, uh, you know, or like me, a weak brain. So, uh, you know, that that's a single stack, you know, gives me rounds. They hold eight, eight rounds. It says eight right on there, so I know. Uh, so I don't have to count them. Uh, that, that is uh, not to be underestimated because uh, magazines can give somebody fits to load uh, for sure. All right, let's shoot some hollow points. See if we can duplicate that weird malfunction. Oh, there's a two liter hiding down there. Yeah, doggy. Damn. I just felt like emptying that one. Let's go over and put one of these hollow points on the gong. See if it'll go through the gong. Notice you've got a loaded chamber indicator there. You can feel it. See it sticks up. Okay. So that's how I know it's loaded. I think it shoots just a little above point of aim. Uh, let's hold on the bottom of that thing yeah. okay that sounded like it hit it I didn't hear, didn't hear the others okay I kind of hear some ringing so you know it's not a, a heavy bullet and uh, with ears in tight, you know, sometimes it's hard to hear the uh, the ringing of the gong, which is not a problem with a big bullet. You can hear it. What else about this thing? Let's see. I think your mag release is uh, reversible, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, you got your little serrations in the front there to help you out a little bit. But again, it's so simple to, to work that slide. Uh, your rail there, you can hang your toaster on that baby. If you can find a holster for it. Uh, again, your, your grip safety, you, know, you may not like that. It might be a deal killer for you. Some people just, just hate those things. 
And uh, again, you don't have a safety on this, a thumb safety. So uh, you can get one with a thumb safety if you like. And uh, it's got kind of a one piece trigger. And, and I showed you the hammer, it is hammer fired. You know, it, you do not have a magazine disconnect. So I'm gonna pull it, click. It's not a bad trigger. I mean, it's a hammer fired trigger and it's got a pretty good break. There's just a little bit of creep. Just a little, just a little creep, as opposed to the big creep holding it in his hand, right? So just a little creep, but a good trigger. You know, for a defensive trigger, it's not bad at all. All right, so the hollow point's fired. That's important. You always want that to happen. I'll, I'll load up again here and shoot it. I might think of another lie to tell you about it. Uh, nice uh, three-dot sights. Uh, just a very... Uh, a uh, convenient little firearm. Uh, probably the negatives would be most likely for for you. I mean, compared, say, with that, I don't know, maybe a little less capacity, perhaps, and you know, as opposed to a double stack pistol of some sort, and uh, and then the caliber, the cartridge. You might rather you know have something at least nine millimeter. On it. But. Uh, if you like the 380 just fine it's a very convenient and sweet shooting little little pistol and it, again if you have uh, weak hands or problems in manipulating things uh it's yeah it's one you want to look at uh because you know in a gun shop you know anybody you, you would you would visit in gun shop they're gonna let you work the slide they may not like you pulling the trigger a lot or something but unless you're ready to lay your money down but uh, they're gonna let you work the slide and see what you think about it okay i would can't imagine a gun shop that wouldn't. Although, you never know, you might walk into some gun shop, some crusty old guy that's very rude. I've had that happen before. Even more rude than I am. Why is that bowling pin still looking at me? Yeah. And that tin can. <laughs> Stop saying. I kind of like it. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go defensive on you here again. All right. Oh man, I just don't like those red targets. There's one right. There. Oh, oh, did it again. <laughs> well, be darn. Hey, that's a pretty picture, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not sure how it's doing that. Uh, so if you have a, a notion, uh, share that. I'm, that is odd. That's unusual. For, uh, I'm trying to think. Okay, if that's the, it's on the last round, right? It was the last round on both both times. So uh, I know with a uh, like a, a 1911, if you're you know single stack magazine, if your spring is getting weak at all, uh, it shows up on that last round especially big old heavy 230 grain you know bullets because i used to have that happen i went around and around in fact back in the oh 1990 uh about some some really household name magazines uh, that were supposed to be some of the very best about how the i, I was just having trouble with the last round you know and after just uh, shooting in a couple of matches and that messing around you know and i didn't want to believe it but uh, yeah, those springs, uh, they, they've got to be strong. So I don't know if that's it or not. Uh, the little 95 grain 380, you wouldn't think would be a, a problem. But uh, yeah, on the last Mac. And I will say, if I'm carrying this firearm uh, for defense, if, if, you, if your spring is beginning to weaken, this one shouldn't be beginning to weaken, it's a brand new uh, firearm. But, uh, there are my malfunctions that are worse than that. You know, if you're if you are limited to your last round, okay. I'm not trying to justify the, having a problem with the firearm, but uh, that that's going to show up uh, on, on the last round generally if you have any kind of issue there. All right. And I don't think that was anything I would be doing. Yeah, that that's what it looks like. I mean, I'm not a gunsmith. Don't pretend to be one. But I do know that that's something you get on the last round when your uh, spring is weak. All right. I should have uh, put a scratch on that magazine or something so I'd know. All right. I saw something online somebody was talking about these magazines because they're so easy to load. They were concerned about uh, the, sh the weakness of the spring and how, how long it would take for them before they got weak. So let's shoot that one again. 
So I don't think it's anything I was doing. I wouldn't have done, I, I had the same grip, uh, I think for every round, I don't know. All right, let's get that cowboy, smart aleck cowboy. Let me make sure I'm keeping my thumb off of it. And that wouldn't do that anyway, yeah. Okay, so a uh, little bit of a bug there. I would, uh, I would just send a mag back probably or something or, or just shoot it a lot and see if it works its way out. Maybe it's something to do with being new, don't know. But uh, other than that, it's, uh, it's done fine. That's the first time that has happened. But uh, that's what you, you get in, in, you know, once you're shooting anytime. And uh, of course we don't edit videos. So, uh, uh, you know, that, that's just is what happens. Could have happened yesterday, you know, or day before. It, it hasn't though. So pretty cool gun. Aside from that, I, I like it. I like it. Uh, I, I think it's going to be really, really popular just like the other shield because it's just a good size firearms, not too big, not too small. So many 380s, uh, which uh, in a lot of ways, that's the role of the 380 fills is a small like pocket pistol. And it's one reason people will go to a 380 because you can get something smaller than a nine or a 45. <laughs> uh, but so a lot of people would not have interest in, in a shield, you know, because it's roughly the same size, you know, as the nine millimeter shield. It is a little bit longer, by the way. The slide's a little longer, if you notice that, a little bit longer. Um, but still, you know, so it's a good size firearm. So a lot of people would say, if I'm gonna carry a gun like this, this size, I want a nine, you know, at least. And that's perfectly understandable, isn't it? But that's because you don't have arthritis in your fingers and you know you can manipulate uh, any firearm out there and you have strength in your hands and strength in your fingers maybe and it's just not an issue for you you're not recoil sensitive at all and so you don't have any of those issues so it's good to have a firearm for everybody yeah something everybody can can use and manipulate so in case you don't want to go to a revolver right nothing wrong with revolvers i love them so the 380, uh, the, the Shield 380, they have been extremely uh, successful with the Shield and the nine millimeter and other calibers it comes in. And so whatever that was with that magazine, I would, uh, I would, you know, uh, I wouldn't worry a lot about it. I would send the mag back maybe if it continued to do it. I'd just call them and say, hey, I need another mag or just you know, try two or three different magazines and work that out. It looks like a magazine issue. To me, it's like a spring issue in the magazine, probably. If you are a gunsmith and you know better, let us know. So anyway, the Shield 380 EZ definitely is EZ. Pretty nice little pistol. Life is good. doing just here uh, practicing a little guitar as you can tell I need to get better um, just on the range hanging out but I wanted to let you guys know while I'm here since you guys just stumbled in on my practice session about our friends over at SDI you can check them out at sdi.edu that's the Sonoran Desert Institute they're a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can be certified in gunsmithing or you can get an associate's degree in firearms technology that's sdi.edu. Also, don't forget about our friends over at vaultechsafe.com. You've seen their safes, the Vaultech on our uh, shooting table. So don't forget to check them out if you get a chance. And also all of our other uh, social media entities. Uh, we are on Patreon now, so you can uh, find us on Patreon. There'll be links in the description. Just Hickok45 on Patreon. We are on Facebook, of course, Hickok45 on Facebook. Um, you can also find Hickok45 on Instagram, the real Hickok45 at Instagram, Hickok45 on Twitter, uh, full30.com, and then I have some social media stuff, uh, John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram, um, John Hickok on Facebook, and there's also a Hickok45 and Son Facebook, and the Hickok45 and Son YouTube channel, of course. And I guess that's all I can think of for now. I believe that's all of our different social media things. So I guess I'll get back 
to my practice. As you can tell, I need to get a lot better. But I think I'm improving just a little bit. I don't know. We'll see.